Do we build defences against sea level rise or give way to the oceans? Now on BBC World News, Earth Report travels to Britain and Kenya to look at a unique UNESCO experiment designed to resolve the conflict. the North Devon coast in southwest England. Here, an experiment is taking place. People have set up a biosphere reserve to look into the future. The biosphere reserve covers a huge coastal area in danger of serious damage from sea level rise as our climate gets warmer. But do local people know what the biosphere reserve is? The biosphere? Not really, no. It's a big greenhouse, isn't it? No, no idea at all, honestly. Of the what? <laughs> the biosphere oh. reserve? Vaguely. Very vaguely. Probably not enough to talk about. It probably means a big paintball. Oh, perhaps it does, yeah. I didn't know it was whatever you said it was, a biosphere reserve. <laughs> How wonderful. A key motive behind biospheres is to alert people to their surroundings. It doesn't surprise me that uh, there's not many people have heard of the biosphere reserve. The message has been put out lots of times, people have probably heard the message. I had heard of it, but I couldn't remember the name of it. <laughs> what is important is about the values and the qualities behind it, not so much the name of the concept itself. Biospheres are not domes in the middle of the countryside like the famous Eden Project in southwest Britain. They are living laboratories where people with an eye on the future respond to changes in their environment. Biospheres were created by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. There are 531 biosphere reserves around the world. To share experience, the British biosphere has twinned itself with the Malindi and Watamu Reserve in Kenya. The regions have much in common. Both have a beautiful coastline attractive to tourists. Both have habitats endangered by unsuitable development. Both have conflicts between man and nature. The Man and the Biosphere program was brought about because clearly there are those conflicts between humankind and nature. You could say the biosphere reserves, their, their foundation is in conflict areas. Andy Bell coordinates this British biosphere in a disused railway station in Biddeford. He has the tricky job of dealing with the conflicts between man and nature, which the biosphere can help to resolve. The whole thing about biosphere reserves is that they are um, about real people, real places and real lives. It is about futures, it is their futures. It is a new kind of concept that really looks at things in an integrated way, whole system-wide thinking as opposed to that's nature and that's society. So Barsha Reserve is really the theatre for that kind of action and debate and discussion. A key problem affecting southwest Britain is sea level rise caused by global warming. To predict the future, Andy is using LIDAR, a new technique, a mixture between laser beams and radar. It is showing that sea level rise is not only inevitable but gradual. Getting people to understand the concept that Yes, two and a half millimetres a year does actually sort of mean quite a lot. And when you mount that up over the years, and it will accelerate over the coming years, it's quite difficult because we want to desensitise them so that you can um, get them to make a, a good sort of head decision as opposed to heart decision. A head decision that has already been taken is to create salt marshes from grazing land. 
We know that we're going to lose about 20% of our salt marsh over the next 20 years within the estuary due to sea level rise alone. So we need to replace these salt marshes because they do provide significant flood defence in its own right or as a coastal defence. If you have salt marsh in front of a sea wall, the sea wall doesn't have to be nearly as big or nearly as resilient because the salt marsh actually takes out that energy of the waves and the tide as it comes up towards those defences. There has been little argument about creating salt marshes, but in the biosphere, one conflict area that has provoked huge debate is the impact of sea level rise just down the coast. The south side of the estuary is protected by a huge ridge of grey pebbles. In the last couple of years at high tides, the waves have made a gap in the ridge and have started to smash down the low cliffs behind the beach. The sea is flooding the land and many local people are not happy. In the past, the council would repair the ridge by moving pebbles into the gaps with heavy machinery. But in the last few years, the policy for the pebble ridge has changed allowing the sea to flood the land behind, known locally as the burrows. Local councillors like Andrew Eastman think that is wrong. My issue is protect the ridge now, rebuild it to prevent the water from inundating that and thus buy us some more time to this very, very uh, un unfortunate scenario. If we were foolish enough to adopt this crazy policy of do nothing. In years to come, in generations to come, I do not want to be held responsible for being one of those who have just done nothing to prevent this very, very valuable asset of ours being depleted to the sea and allowing the mother nature to regain what we've always taken for granted as our burrows to enjoy. Andy Bell is well aware of the lobby for beach repairs, but looks at the problem differently. The modelling we've done for the next 100 years means we're going to have to start thinking about moving. We can't play you know, King Canute to try and stop things all the time. We can't keep on putting millions and millions of pounds into holding a situation that isn't really sustainable. There has to be a time when we move back. Immediately behind the Pebble Ridge is a golf course, and that's in danger too. Royal North Devon Golf Course, founded in 1864, is regarded as the St Andrews of England. Doug Bushby is chairman of the golf club and is not happy that the seventh tee is being drastically reduced by the waves. The pebble ridge has been depleted to such an extent it's almost as flat as the beach itself and with each incoming tide, the edge of the sand dune area is being eroded quite dramatically. Um, you know, with each tide, uh, even the wind and rain uh, is, is, is having an effect. It's obviously very good for, you know, wading birds and, uh, you know, things of that nature, but not very good for the users of the burrows uh, at, at the moment. And there's another problem on the burrows. It contains an old, unregulated landfill tip, now grassed over. Alistair Barclay saw what was thrown into the dump. The amount of rubbish that went in here is incredible. It's an unregulated tip. People were coming out at night and dropping all sorts of things in here. Uh, one of the main things was the asbestos. A lot of the asbestos were dropped in here, and various lorries came from other areas and dropped chemicals in here. It's, it's been denied by Devon County Council. They, they've done borings on here, and it's been denied that any hazardous material. But I'm afraid they're wrong. With uh, reports that come out about surveys of this, that, and the other, I mean, there will always be suspicion. There's always the, um, the the theories that you know there is some kind of conspiracy going on there. Um, I believe that this report is actually sort of genuine. The chemical analysis of the the water that's done by the Environment Agency in the past that I've seen suggests that most of actually the bad stuff has actually been washed out already. Well, it means that they haven't got it, they feel they haven't got the responsibility to do anything because they've proved there's no problem. And once you prove there's no problem, they won't do anything. But there is a problem. There's, and undeniably, there's a problem. We're standing on it. 
I'm not surprised people have, have their suspicions. There's been a lot of rumours around that for a long time. And it won't take, it will take an awful lot more than one report to try and turn those suspicions around. But someone who takes a geological perspective on rising sea levels is Peter Keane. He has studied the burrows since he was a child. There's no doubt the burrows in a geological time scale is going to disappear as it has done many times in the past. The last time the sea level approached the present time was about 125,000 years ago and that was eight metres higher than present sea level. But that's enough to mean really that the sea level reoccupied the sea floor everywhere that it had previously uh, abandoned. To measure the extent of sea level rise on their local beach, students of Biddeford College are examining the Pebble Ridge. 